genius is the target no one else can see. My name is Arya Vaingankar, wishing you a pleasant morning. Today is the epic day in the history of Rainbow International School. The launch of E-Impulse. E-Impulse? What's this? Oh my my, the animal exhibition of the RIS. In this challenging situation, maintaining a good mindset is probably the most important thing that one can do. It will allow one to stay a bit, avoid pointless sorrow, persist through hard work, finding smart solutions and eventually turn the situation around. This is true with Rainbow International School. These students have nailed it once again. Let's go on the virtual tour to unwind and understand what each student has created. and today I will show parallels and meridians on a globe. This is a globe. It is the exact miniature model of the earth. It has many places. So how can we look at so many places on the globe? This is because of some vertical and horizontal lines known as meridians and parallels. So both the lines divide the earth into two equal halves. So what are the differences between them? The differences between them are First, it divides the earth vertically where meridians divide the earth vertically whereas the parallels divide the earth horizontally. Second, where do they divide? The parallel meridians divide eastern hemisphere and western western and eastern hemisphere whereas the, this line or latitude divide in northern and southern hemisphere. Third, the number of them. Number of the parallels are 181 whereas the number of meridians are 360. Fourth, how are they? These meridians are semicircle lines which run from North Pole to South Pole, whereas the parallels run from West direction to East direction. Now, this is, this is done. This red line is the equator which divides the earth into northern and southern hemisphere. It is located at 0 degrees. This is the prime meridian which, pass, which passes through Greenwich in London. It has, it is located at 0 degree. Now, this, this is, as you can see here, this yellow line is the prime meridian. Now, when these lines intersect, they are known as the grids, which are used to look, locate places on the globe. So we can locate places on the globe very easily. Thank you everyone. Good morning my dear respected teachers and my dear friends. I am Leah Patek from class 6 day which to present comparison between early men's life and modern men's life. Early men are the precursors of present form of human race. Modern men are the subspecies of early men. Early men originated 6 million years ago. As we, as we all know that early men had limited or no resources as compared to resources available with modern men. Early, early men used to struggle for their daily needs like food, shelter, etc. They travelled from one place to another in search of food and shelter. While modern man has all these facilities and can find food and shelter easily. Early men used to live in huts made up of bamboo, dry leaves, cow dung, etc. While modern man lives in build, multi-story buildings which are made up of concrete, bricks, etc. 
Early men used to eat fresh fruits and vegetables while modern men have started taking a lot of junk food because of which early men used to live longer as compared to modern men. Earlier there was no electricity so they used fire as a source of electricity. For cooking food they used wood firing while modern men use electricity and gas for cooking food. Due to this modern tech advanced technologies like mobiles and internet communication for modern men has improved a lot but communication for earlier men was really difficult. Occupation of early men was mainly farming or hunting to meet their daily needs while the modern men had many occupations like and businesses like scientists, doctors, engineers, information technology services which helped them to meet their daily needs. Early men had to walk to reach from one place to another and it required a lot of time and energy. But Modern men has good transport services like bus, car, train, aeroplane. Although these modern people have modern facilities, but at the same time many people are getting health diseases. This is due to change in eating habits, very less physical activities, not living in natural environment, pollution, etc. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Ananya Das from class 6B. Rainbow International School. Today, I'm going to talk about the revolution and rotation of Earth. The Earth spins around its axis just like a top spins around its spindle. The spinning movement is called as the Earth's rotation. As the Earth rotates on its own axis, day and night is formed. The Earth takes 24 hours to complete a rotation with respect of the Sun. The Earth's axis of rotation is tilted by 23 and a half degrees. This tilt causes the different seasons of the year. Revolution Revolution is the movement of the Earth around the Sun. The Earth takes a full Year, that is 365 days for a complete revolution around the sun. The path of the earth moving around the sun is called its orbit. The, the earth's orbit is elliptical. The movement of the earth around the sun is, is a fixed path is called revolution. Good morning everyone. Myself, Jai I am from Grad 6G. So today I am going to tell about the diversity of India. As you know, India is one of the most diverse planet, most diverse nation in this planet. And it's, there is a diversity in the terms of religion, culture and language. And it's also diversity in the terms of food. So today I am going to tell you the most comforting food. It is dominated to the parts of Indian household. It is none other than khichdi. Khichdi is made with salt, lettuce and rice. It is every state has its own varieties and different names to call this special and common food. So let's see some different ways. Well, the first khichdi is called Punjabi khichdi or we can also call as Udal khichdi. It is made with split green grub or we can even say it has the green moong dal and rice and flavored with Indian spices to make it more yummy. So the next is the Uttarakhand khichdi or the Urad khichdi. It is made the same way it is made with others but it is, but it is made in hot water spring. The next is the Rajasthani millet khichdi. It is, it is called millet because it is made with millets and hover wheat instead of rice. And it is also spicier than the, it is less spicy than the Maharashtra khichdi. And now let's see the next one. It's the Gujarati khichdi made. It is US founded which is avoided with spices to keep it as simple as possible. And the next is the Karnataka khichdi. It is made with busy bell bath 
or you can also call as hot written rice and it is prepared with vegetables. The next country is Pongal. It is called in Tamil Nadu. Pongal is, has a sweet savor flavor because it is made by sugar, milk and rice. The Pongal means spillover because it describes the process of cooking it. The next is the Odisha Khichdi or Kolas Khichdi. In, in Odisha, we make two kinds of Khichdi, Mutal Khichdi and Asphora Khichdi, which means it is made by ginger, asphodia and, and nothing. The next Khichdi is the next Khichdi is the West Bengal Khichdi, which is lots of sweetness and sourness. It's the same like Pongal, but a little different. So I hope you like it and though my dear friends, don't you think it's interesting that India has so much of different kinds of variation but still it is the glory and unity and Hello and good morning to everyone out there. My name is Trisha Mathur and I am from 7C. So today I will be talking about my project Rainwater Harvesting and how it actually works. So what is Rainwater Harvesting? Rainwater Harvesting is the process of collecting rainwater from roofs and other above surfaces on which rain falls. Now this process is completed in three main steps. First is the connect collection tank in which the rainwater falls. Now through the pipes, the, this water will get filled in the filter filtration tank through which all the tiny sediments will be filtered and finally the water will get filled in the storage tank. Now I will show you how this works. Now let's assume this is our rainwater. Now if we pour it, see the rainwater is getting filtered in the filtration tank and slowly and steadily it will get filled in our storage tank. Now here the filtered water is getting filled in our fi storage tank. And this is how our filtration takes place. Now from this storage tank, you can use this water for laundry purpose or watering livestock, flushing toilets. However, you cannot use this water for drinking, kitchen use or showering. Now if we talk about the dry countries like Australia, the rainwater harvesting process is even more popular over there. So that's it. I hope you all learned something today. Thank you. Good morning dear parents. My name is Mishka Gambani from 7G and today I am going to tell you about the structure of the earth. Get ready to dig deep, can and join us on a fascinating journey to the center of the earth. Secrets buried inside our planet are revealed by studying and recording things called seismic waves which are caused by earthquakes, explosions and movement of eruptions. There are two types of seismic waves, a shear wave which won't move through liquids and a pressure wave which moves through both liquids and solids. These waves are proven that our earth is divided into five layers, inner and outer core, lower and upper mantle and the crust. In a core, the temperature is 5000 degrees Celsius to 6000 degrees Celsius, the state is solid and the composition is iron and liquid. The Earth's inner core is a huge metal ball 2500 kilometers wide and it is made mainly of iron. The temperature is about 5000 degrees Celsius to 6000 degrees Celsius which is 6000 times hotter than our atmosphere and scorching enough to make metal melt. But the metal at the inner core stays in the solid state because of the incredible pressure surrounding it. Outer core, the temperature is 4000 degrees Celsius to 6000 degrees Celsius. The state is liquid and the composition is iron, nickel, sulfur and oxygen. The liquid layer of iron and nickel is 5150 kilometers deep. The outer core flows around the center of the earth and the movement of the metals in it creates our planet's magnetic field. Our mantle, the temperature is 3000 degrees Celsius. The state is solid and the composition is iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium and aluminium. This layer is between 670 km to 2900 km below the surface and is made from solid.
solid rock. The rock is hot enough to melt but stays in the solid state because of the pressure pushing down on it. Upper the temperature is 1400 degrees Celsius to 3000 degrees Celsius. The state is solid and liquid and the composition is iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium and aluminium. This layer is 670 kilometers below the surface. The lower part of the upper mantle has solid rock as well as melted rock which is liquid while the upper region is stiffer as it is cooler. Crust. The temperature is around 22 degrees Celsius and the state is of course solid. The earth's surface is covered by its thinnest layer called the crust. The land is covered by continental crust which is 7 to 80 km thick and is made mainly from a rock called granite. The surface beneath the ocean bed is called oceanic crust which is 8 km thick and made mainly from a rock called basalt. Here's a fact. By studying rocks and meteorites, which are rocks from space, scientists believe that our Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Thank you dear parents. I hope you learned something. Have a wonderful day ahead. Good morning my dear friends, teachers and parents. So I Prisha Shah from class 7B welcomes you all for the SST AM Wells. So today I will tell you some things on the topic terrace farming. So one obvious question will be there that what is terrace farming. So let's see that. So terrace farming is a type of farming in which the cultivation is done on steps as you can see here and in the picture also and it is done mostly in the hilly areas. It is done to reduce soil erosion by any means or method. The word terrace literally means step by step. As we all know that farming means growing crops. So the word terrace farming means growing crops on steps. As you can see here that they are planting uh, plants on the steps. Yes, so now I will tell you that how is terrace farming done. So, terrace cultivation method of growing plants on sides of hills or on mountains by planting on graduated terraces built into the slope. Though labor intensive, the method has been employed to maximize arable land area in variable terrains and to reduce soil erosion by any means and water loss. So now, you might be thinking that where is it done? Where is terrace farming done? So let's look into that. So, as we have discussed in the first slide that it is usually used or done where there is a hill or a mountain. It is done in Asia by rice growing countries like Vietnam, Philippines and Indonesia. It is also a practice that has been in use to the rice fields of Asia to the steep flows of ants in South America. So now I will show you some pictures. So here as you can see these are the steep slopes of the South America. And down the three pictures in which you can see are the countries in which terrace farming is done. They are Vietnam, Philippines and Indonesia. So now you might be thinking that which crops are grown in terrace farming. So let's look into some of the crops. So some of the crops that are grown in terrace farming are paddy, cereals, fruits, vegetables, flowers, aromatic plants, dye plants, medicinal plants, wheat, maize, rice, pulses, saffron, oil seeds, millet, buckwheat, grain, amaranth, spices and etc. Many crops are grown. So now let's look into the some plants. Here you can see the some plants that are grown in terrace farming. So now you might be thinking that why are many people do terrace farming. So let's see some how terrace farming is useful to us. So as we have know, as we all know that terrace farming is carried out on the slopes of mountain. Yes. So this is done to create flat lands to grow crops. And it is also useful as it slows down the speed of water running down the mountain. And this helps conserve fertile top soil. Now let's look into some benefits of terrace farming. The major benefit of terrace farming is the conservation of soil and water. Terrace reduces both the amount and velocity of water 
moving across the soil terrace which greatly reduces soil erosion. Terrace thus permits more intensive cropping that will otherwise be possible. So now let's look into the some effects of terrace farming. So as you know it requires huge input of labor to construct and maintain and when not maintained properly the effects can be catastrophic. On maintaining can terraces can lead to mudslides and the creation of deep gullies, increased soil erosion, particularly in sandy soils or on extremely steep terrains. So now as we saw the information on terrace, so I hope that you all uh, liked it, enjoyed it. So and I also hope that you learn things about this farming and thank you for watching it patiently. Thank you. Bye. Dear parents and teachers, my name is Bihang Nitin Savan from class 7 He is here with the exhibition. My subject is SST and my topic is Persian Meal. It is originated in India and contested history while the other historians point it and introduced it as the early days of Sultan, Delhi Sultan and others pin it on Babur's entry into India and the one of the most famous mentions was that Babur's memories, Babur Nama. Ba um, the Persian heel is a mechanical water lifting device which is you which is done by with the draught animals like buffaloes, camels and bullocks. And it is used to and it is used to and it is used to lift water sources like open from open wells and it has a name in Sanskrit. Agrahatta to describe it in ancient text the Persian bee it is mostly used in hilly areas and South Asia South Asia and here is how it works actually there is no water right now but if you get it down like this it pickups the water and then after moving it falls down and the water again goes in the well okay so thank you for listening to me and stay at home and stay safe namaste to my respected teachers and my dear friends i am dilang from class 7 will introduce to you a very interesting topic from history which is archaeological sources. When I got this topic, I was excited and curious to make study about this project. And as I started, many questions arise in my mind, such as what are archaeological sources, why are archaeological sources important, and how they help us in the study of history. So please join me. Archaeological sources are basic, basically the material evidence that gives important and detailed information pertaining to a particular period. Archaeological sources include many things such as monuments, coins, inscriptions of India and paintings on stones and walls and so on. Archaeological sources played an important role in constructing a history of religion. These sources enhanced our knowledge about our past and also provide important material which we could not have been obtained otherwise. So this is all for my impulse project. Thank you for watching. Hello everybody. My name is Jayan Kumar and I am from grade 7C. Today I am going to explain you all about volcano. Volcano is an opening in the earth's crust through which lava, volcanic ash and ga lava as gases escape. Volcanic eruptions are caused by pressure from dissolving gas. Beneath the volcano, liquid magma 
which contains dissolved gas rises through cracks in the earth's crust as the magma rises up the pressure decreases and the gases form into bubbles then there are three kinds of volcanoes active volcanoes dormant volcanoes and extinct volcanoes the extinct vol active volcanoes are living volcanoes which erupt frequently for example mount etna in italy dormant volcanoes sleeping volcanoes which are which erupt after a long period for example mount vesuvius in italy again extinct extinct volcanoes extinct volcanoes are called in inactive volcanoes or dead volcanoes for example kilimanjaro in africa so now i will show how the volcano erupts students teachers and parents i am athira nirmal from 7th p and i'm going to be doing a presentation on global warming global warming refers to the gradual rise in the overall temperature of the atmosphere of the earth there are various activities taking place which have been increasing the temperature gradually global warming is melting our ice glaciers rapidly this is extremely harmful to earth as well as humans it is not quite challenging to control global warming However, it's not unimaginable. Global warming has become a grave problem which needs undivided attention. It is not happening because of one single cause, but it has several causes due to it. These causes are both natural as well as man-made. The natural causes include the release of greenhouse gases which are not able to escape from the earth, causing the temperature to increase. Further, volcanic eruptions are also responsible for global global warming. That is to say, these eruptions release tons of carbon dioxide, which contributes to the global warming. Similarly, methane is one of the biggest issues responsible for global warming. After that, the excessive use of auto automobiles and fossil fuel results in levels of results in higher levels of carbon dioxide. In addition, activities like mining, cattle rearing are very harmful to the environment. Now I have an activity here set up. I have here a balloon filled with air and a lighter. Here what I want to explain is the the heat capacity of water. Now as we can see, this balloon has no water in it which is filled with air. Now just as I light the lighter and keep it close to the balloon, you will see what happens. it popped this shows that air does not have heat capacity and since it cannot absorb the heat it burns the rubber which then causes into the popping of the balloon here i have a water balloon which is filled with water now i'm going to be doing the same thing to the water balloon As you can see, the water balloon did not pop, 
and it lasted for quite some time. If I would have kept it longer, it would uh, originally it would like pop because the water capacity, the water can only handle a certain capacity of heat, which would then start burning the rubber and burning the pop. Heat is energy, and when you add energy to a system, changes occur because all systems in the global climate system are connected. Adding heat energy causes the global climate as a whole to change. Much of the world is covered with oceans, which heat up. When the oceans heat up, more water evaporates into clouds. When storms like hurricanes, typhoons are forming, the result is more energy-intensive storms. A, a warmer atmosphere makes glaciers, mountain snowpacks, the polar ice cap, and the great ice sheet cutting up Antarctica and Antarctica melt, raising sea levels. Thank you very much. Hello my respected teachers and all my dear friends this side Himanshu Kambati from grade 7b so today in this video i'm going to explain you about equality with best examples and a short story let's get started over here i made a chart in which a boy is telling the meaning of equality equality means having same rights right and today's argument it says that equality it means respect for everyone and having same rights but inequality says being poor and low caste people here's i brought a best example for you all which is the person the rich person who is living in this bungalow and the poor people who are living in this small houses the big bungalows are really too expensive and their rich people live these types of languages and sentences they tell to the poor people and that's true another thing is that here's another example you are a weaver and i am a computer operator you earn 50 rupees per day and i earn 500 rupees per day see i do the best job between clothes you are wearing these old fashion sarees and so see we are wearing this hot pants short frocks caps etc so this was the video with some examples for now bye and have a nice day thank you hello everyone i am satya model of spinning jelly along with my small explanation the spinning jelly of cotton into threads for weaving into cloth had traditionally taken a place in the home of tile workers known as cottage industries but the 18th century saw the emergency of the industrial revolution the great age of steam canals and factories had changed the face of the british economic forever james r jeeves spinning jenny we will use the process of cotton spinning looking at this you can concrete with r jeeves spinning machine see there were eight spindles and when they will spin this wheel like this the spindle will rotate and it will form a piece of cloth here and from piece of cloth we can make various things as you know we can make shirts pants t-shirts and etc i will tell you how how it works in more deep explanation the machine used eight spindles on to which the thread was spun so by turning a single wheel the operator could spin eight wheels together at once this increased the at with improvement in the technology the spinning jenny was a huge success due to the fact that it could hold more than one ball of yarn therefore making more cloth material in a short amount of time 
while reducing the overall cost so thank you to give me this opportunity i hope you enjoyed to know this fact and thank you hi all i am shrov thakur and today i am going to take you the journey of the monuments of our nation first is brihadeshwara temple second is hawa mahal and third is red fort so let's go first is brihadeshwara temple it is the second largest temple in india it was built by raja raja chola pan between 1003 and 1080 the temple tower is 216 feet in height the 1.3 lakh tons of granite was used to construct the temple the architecture is based on interlock metal also known as puzzle technique no cement or plaster was used between the stones now about the ruler who built Bihareshwara temple which is Raja Raja Chola Ban Raja Raja Chola Ban is considered as the greatest king of the Cho- Chola empire he ruled between 985 to and 1014 CE he laid the foundation for the growth of the Chola kingdom into an empire second is Hawa Mahal Hawa Mahal is one of the most famous ancient monuments of Rajasthan was built by Maharaja Pratap Singh in 1799. Hawan Hill is so called because it has 953 windows through which breeze flows and keeps the palace cool. Hawan Hill is built in the shape of Lord Krishna's crown. Hawan Hill is the tallest building in the world without a foundation. Hawan Hill has only land instead of stairs to reach the upper floors of the building. Now, but the ruler who built Hawa Mahal, which is Maharaja Pratap Singh, Maharaja Savai Pratap Singh was a Dutch Mahalulal of Jaipur from 1778 to 1803. He was born on December 1764 and succeeded his father Madhav Singh I. He is known for constructing the Hawa Mahal. Now, third is Red Fort. The real name of Red Fort was Kila e Mubarak or the Red Fort. The fort was constructed between May 1639. and it is 1648 by shah jahan every year on 15th august india prime minister who is the tricolor flag in the premises of the building the monument was recognized as the unesco world heritage site in 2007 and is counted as the most brilliant work of architecture from the mughal era nawabul ghar who built red fort is shah jahan shah jahan in persian means king of the world was the fifth mughal emperor Born Guling Khan, 1628 to 1658. His reign was the golden age of Mughal architecture. Thank you, and I hope you like the journey to the monuments of our nation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Gerishma from Class 8. Today, I am here to tell you all about elections and TV. We are all are familiar with the term elections. Whenever elections are there in our country. We all get excited and start to talk about giving vote to our favorite candidate. They are today. I am here to tell you all about EVM. EVM stands for Electronic Voting Machine. Electronic voting machine is far far different from the traditional ballot paper system in both the terms of mechanism and performance. The EVM is divided into two parts. the control unit and the balloting unit the control unit and the balloting unit are joined together by a cable a person who has never gone to school or never had voted can also vote without any difficulty the front panel shows the candidates standing in the election with their respective political party symbol There, there is a switch or a button in front of every candidate. For example, now let me just give you a demo of how to vote. Like I am a voter and I want to vote for the B- candidate standing from BJP. So I will just click on the button. This LED and this short beep sound is the sign of a successful vote. The dedicated, the dedicated counter of the, the dedicated counter of the corresponding party is placed inside it. 
with every vote the corresponding with every vote the corresponding counter of the candidate increases and is displayed on the lcd screen at the end of the elections the polling the at the end of the elections the at the end of the elections the polling officer can open the uh, machine count the votes and declare the results evm has brought more swiftness acceptability and transparency in the system thank you all for giving me this opportunity to tell you all about evm stay home stay safe hello everyone i am vaishnavi from grade 8c i am presenting you about mass media which played a major role during pandemic first of all let us know about media media works as a bridge between government and society the media is a platform through which communication message is created and shared to different kinds of audience some modes of transmissions are traditional media which is our radio print media television etc and new media represents digital platforms such as social media websites blogs apps etc now let's come to mass media which reaches large number of people in short time mass media have long been recognized as powerful forces shaping how we experience the world and ourselves during the pandemic time the role played by mass media is irreplaceable since the world is facing the largest and most fearful lockdown in the history the role played by media especially television has played a very positive and responsible role in keeping the countryman calm and motivated in this rough and tough time television plays a crucial role where the government and the officials are able to connect with the general public in spreading quick and fast appeals and guidelines in battling the crisis worldwide the people feel emotionally connected with television and feel secure and safe with daily updates and information given out by this old medium to keep situations in control and keeping the best of calmness and peace in the country television and newsmakers have played crucial role in combating rumors and spreading a positive and motivating atmosphere in the country the role played by media cannot be matched and its role is a one avoidable in our present period and it will be built its view with stronger layer towards the future thank you for giving me this opportunity stay home stay safe hello everyone my name is anvita pille from class 8a and today i'll be talking about handloom fabrics now you might be wondering what is a handloom a handloom is a loom that is used to weave cloth without the usage of any electricity for example this is one of my grandma's old sarees it is made from handloom now see all these prints and designs they are made without the usage of any electricity cool right so now let's talk a little bit about the process of making a handloom fabric as you can see here i have made a chart of how to make a handloom fabric let's see the first step into making a handloom fabric number 1 pattern design the design of the fabric is drawn on draft paper this transfers to yarn before dyeing during patterning number 2 warp winding here the warp or lengthwise threads are removed from the spool and wound into long bundles step 3 warp patterning the vertical pattern of the design is first marked on the warp bundle and rubber strips are wound around the bundle to block the dye step 4 warp dyeing the warp dye in natural and artificial color dyes the dye is repeated depending on the design and colors The dyeing is done with light colors first and dark colors last. Step five: weft patterning and dyeing. The weft or width widthwise threads are marked with a horizontal pattern. The weft is then dyed and then goes into the loom. Loom preparation and weaving. Depending on the design, the warp wise threads are put through the appropriate needles. They lift some warp threads based on designs. The weaving process consists of pulling the subtle. Between the warp threads, the weft thread is back packaged into the cloth using a beater. The fabric is then unloaded. As you can see here, here is a diagram of Gandhi ji's infamous charka. It was made during the mid 1900s, um, during the Swadeshi movement. 
And here is an example of a handloom saree. Handloom fabrics are one of the most unique fabrics. Each fabric is a reflection of the weaver's mood and hard work. So, let's take this timeless tradition and support handloom. Jai Hind. Good morning to one and all. I am Ms. Asmi Shirsad of Grade 9E and my topic for the E-Impulse 2020 is a memory game on the physical features of India under the subject Social Studies. Most of you all know what a memory game is and how it is played. So without getting into much details, I will be telling you more about the twist I put on my memory game. So in this game, the cards include pictures of some places and their matching cards will be their definitions. I have already told my parents in detail about the topic and the information that is in these cards. So now, based on what they remember, they will be searching either the picture for the definition or vice versa. Now, let's play the game. I have set the cards facing upward so that my parents can memorize their positions. But after we are done memorizing it, I will be reversing the cards and jumbling them a bit. Shivaliks It is the southern part of the ancient supercontinent Pangaea with Angara land in the northern part No Definition Group of islands lying close to the Malabar coast of Kerala. No. Definition This desert lies towards the western margins of the Aravalli Hills. This region receives very low rainfall. The Indian Desert. Right. One point for my dad. Southern part of the ancient supercontinent Pan Pangaea with Angara land in the northern part. Definition My mom will have to try again because she got two definitions. Gondwana land. Correct. Lakshadweep Island A group of island lying close to the Malabar coast of Kerala right. So with this the game comes to an end I hope you had fun watching it You can play this game with your family members at home I hope you enjoy the rest of the exhibition Thank you Good morning teachers uh, Good morning everyone. So I am Sakshi Dengle from class 9B and today I am going to present the social science impulse and the topic is graphic representation of uh, population distribution across, uh, 
regarding the success and poverty so first of all what is uh, population distribution population distribution means the pattern of where people live population distribution is uneven across the globe uh, there are some densely populated areas and some sparsely populated areas sparsely populated areas are more difficult to live in so and the factors that affect uneven distribution of population are climate land forms topography energy and mineral resources and soil so here you can see some densely populated areas mentioned uh, for, for example east asia south asia southeast asia europe north america etc and some sparsely populated areas are airy lands tropical rainforests highlands and high latitudes for example mountains and here you can see a pie chart of uh, some countries some main countries and their population so the biggest population is of china and then india and then so on and here is the uh, here are the population numbers of different countries for example india has 1 billion 380 billion 4385 people and so on half of the population is uneducated especially in india if we work for on this population and spend more money on education and human resources then we can use our population as a strength and not a weakness more human resources will be developed then more skill labor will increase if skill labor increases then the economy will increase if the economy increases it will be more better to the country and will lead to the betterment of the country thank you hello everyone my name is parikrama gupta and i am from 9c and my apple topic is story card on french revolution so it all got started from 1774 when louis the 16th was ascend the throne of france and he was only 20 years old so he faces empty treasury he found out that the treasure is getting empty of the france because he supported the americans in the american war of independence and the loan of the france increased so to settle this down he asked the common people to pay high tax
form a new assembly and they named this as convention. On 10th September 19, uh, 1792, the France were declared as a republic and Louis XVI and his whole family was being in prison. After that, Louis XVI was sentenced to death and beheaded. After nine months, the Queen Mary Antoinette was also being beheaded. The, the time between 1793 and 1794 is referred as Legion of Terror, where August Fear was the head of it. He even did, uh, punishment all the members, ex-nobles, clergy, and even of the members of his own party. He increased the, he made things expensive and increased the rate of all the things. He did not allow the people to have a good meal, the good quality of bread, and forced peasants to sell, uh, to sell this in a fixed price in the towns. Finally, he was he was arrested and sent to be beheaded. After that, in 1804, Napoleon assigned the throne of France, and in 1815 he was defeated at Waterloo. So this was all, and this was the French Revolution explaining in a nutshell. I hope you like it, and thank you so much. Hello everyone, this is Nagini Mitra of Class 10th E. We will talk on topic rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting is collecting or storing of rainwater, rainwater rather than allowing it to run out. So basically, rainwater harvesting is a process on uh, where the water is collected on the surface where it falls. Then it is brought to filtration tank where the water is filtered. Then it directly connects to the well where it it can is stored and can be used for various purposes. Now I like to tell advantages and disadvantages of rainwater harvesting. So the advantages of rainwater harvesting are it is less cost, help in reducing water bill, decreases demand of water, decreases the need of imported water, and promotes both water and energy conservation. Now we like to tell some disadvantages of rainwater harvesting. First, regular maintenance is required. Second. Limited or no rainfall can limit the supply of rainwater. Third, if not installed properly, then this can bring many waterborne diseases or mosquitoes too. Fourth, due to one of the significant drawbacks of rainwater harvesting is storage limits. Last, I will give my vote of thanks to my teachers who gave me such a beautiful opportunity to do, do this project and also my parents who helped me so much in doing this and I will also like to thank the audience for listening to me patiently. Hello everyone, myself Dhanishka from grade 10A. Today my topic is of food travels. So you all might be thinking how we are able to eat so many varieties of foods like example take potato, rice and sugar cane. Eventually all these have been cultivated from different parts of the world but now we are, we, we are able to see it in our country and we can eat it very easily. So let's take first example of potato. Potato was first domesticated in southern Peru and northwestern Bolivia. And Spanish introduced potato in the Europe. Uh, in India, Portuguese uh, came and they said that it is a potato. And Indian took the name of Alu and this name came under the British rule in India. So let's take the second example which is rice. Rice has always been as rice is a seasonal plant called Oriza sativa. It has been cultivated since 6000 BCE. The India and China started always uh, started cultivating rice in the same year or same period. Origin of rice has always been a hot topic and a hot debate between China and India. Muslims brought rice in Sicily, which is a part of southern Italy in 9th century. By 15th century, it got spread in Italy and France. Let's take the third example, which is sugar cane. Sugar cane was first originated in or first produced in India, but then it traveled to Portuguese and Spain. Because of People of India used to chew the sugar cane and drink its sweet juice. Because of many mechanisms and chemicals, the people could uh, bake or people could make the
the juice into sugar crystals and jaggery and today Brazil is the largest producer of sugar cane or sugar and India is the largest consumer of sugar. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Soham Chandbade from class 10C and my impulse on is on SST. So my topic for today is agricultural food crop and non-agricultural food crop. So let us begin on agricultural food crop. Agriculture is a science and art of cultivating plants and livestock. Agriculture is a key of sedentary human civilization whereby farming of domesticated species created uh, enables people to live in uh, cities. cities. The history of agriculture began thousands of years ago. So it was the main source of income for all the humankind. It is also the nutrition, it is also the primary nutrition food for all humankind. Food grown is harvested at extensively for profit and subsistence. Most agricultural food crop is aquaculture or agriculture. Most crops are harvested for food for human beings and fodder for livestock. Now let example of agricultural food crops are maize, fruits mm-hmm. and wheat. We can also gain vitamins and proteins from them. Now let us move on non-agricultural food crops. Non-agricultural food crops or which is also known as industrial crops is a crop which is grown to produce manufacturing goods. For example, fiber for clothing or rather than food for their consumption. Industrial crop is a designation given to attempt a rise of uh, rise of farm sector's income and provide development activities for rural areas. Industrial crops also attempt to provide products which can be substituted for the from import to our nation. For example, for example, biofuel, cash crops, and energy crops. Thank you. Hello, I am Riva Gupta of Class 10 and I am going to say on my social science in this project. Developed and non-developed countries. So, developed countries have high per capita income and GDP as compared to non-developed countries. Developed countries have good infrastructure and a better environment in terms of health and service, but these are absent in non-developed countries. Developed countries generate their revenue from industrial sector, but Non-developed countries generate their revenue from the service sector. In developed countries, the standard of living of people is high, but it's low in non-developed countries. Resources are effectively and efficiently utilized in developed countries. On the other hand, these are not properly utilized in non-developed countries. The birth rate and the death rate are low in developed countries, but both are high in non-developed countries. The in developed countries, the literacy rate is high, but in non-developed countries or in developing countries, illiteracy rate is high. So now we will talk about literacy rate in India. So this is a graphical representation of literacy rate in India. Literacy of India is a socio-economic progress. Despite of many governmental programs, the literacy rate of India has increased sluggishly. The year the 2011 census indicated that year 2001-2011 has has literacy rate of 9.2%. But as compared to previous decade census conducted, it is slow. The literacy rate of India is 77.7%, while Kerala has emerged as the most literate state of the India. By Mizoram and Andhra Pradesh have recorded the lowest state of illiteracy in India. According to the uh, sources by National Statistical Office conducted in June 2007 to July 2018, indicated that male literacy rate is high than female literacy rate. The male literacy rate is 84.7% while female literacy rate is 70.3%. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Social science helps individuals to be responsible, active, and reflective towards the society. 
As we all are well aware, we have two topics that are on the pinnacle of discussion. These are COVID-19 and the banning of PUBG and TikTok. While COVID-19 began its journey as a small disease, in the city of Wuhan, within months, it enveloped the entire world and rained destruction upon us. It locked us into our houses and tried to cut off our communications with everybody, but didn't succeed. As for the part of blocking us in, it did. But this pandemic also taught us how to forge connections in ways we never dreamt of. One very popular connection is virtual schooling. We're all dreading the separation from our school, teachers, and most importantly, our friends. But this platform jumped the hook for us. Today, more than 250 million children from India are getting educated through this platform. While the schools are advancing with positivity in this field, it comes as a heartbreaker to many teenagers because of the recent ban of two very famous apps, PUBG and TikTok. On this note, the Department of Social Science is here presenting a show. Today, students of grade 9th and 10th are going to portray themselves as historic personalities and present their views on these two current hot topics. Today, I will be presenting a report on the ban of the very popular gaming app PUBG as well as the short video creator TikTok. Player Unknown Battlegrounds, popularly known as PUBG, is one of the 118 recently banned Chinese apps by the central government of India in accordance with issues of national security and privacy. Not having used this app myself, I cannot address any personal effects of the ban. But this ban is sure to make a statement and is going to turn out as a huge loss for China. India was one of the biggest markets for PUBG as well as TikTok. As per a recent research done, around 611 million people only from India use TikTok and PUBG had over 198 million downloads along with 40 million monthly users. This generated a quarter of the total users of this gaming app. PUBG had generated a whopping revenue of $1.8 billion only from India, which is more than the per annum generation by Netflix. TikTok is also not behind. Although this personal revenue is currently unavailable, it is not tough to figure out the numbers because 30% of the revenue generated by TikTok comes from India. With the banning of these two very popular apps, along with numerous others, China is surely got an iron heart punch. Losing revenue that is greater than the revenue generated by Netflix and Amazon Prime, it is about to leave a mark. But there are many positives to this ban as well. Many teenagers spent numerous hours addicted to this game not engaging in personal stuff at all. This addiction went to such an extent that the game producers had to invoke a healthy reminder which popped up if you played the game for more than six hours. Although people are trying to figure out what to do, we now have time to engage in numerous other activities. We have time to enhance our skills, we have time to work on our hobbies, and most importantly, we have more time to spend with our family. Well, with this, I would like to conclude this report. Thank you, stay safe, and stay home. Hey, Prashya. Oh, so, so sorry. You said I have told me which audience. Now go, keep my tea ready. Yeah, so intense. So what do you all say? Jai Han. Uh, Jai Han, Jai Han. So, what about the PUBG ban in India? Well, I must say, I am on the side of those who play PUBG because I believe it helped people to combat their anger. It taught them patience, increased their concentration. Men love violence and action, but it 
also helped women to skill in self defense it was one good thing going on in this life during this deadly pandemic yes the world is full of intelligent and smart people but being strategic and sharp is also ensured by this game modi sir i don't see any issue here because yeah i know indian parents they must be happy with this decision but youth they also play the game and in the upcoming elections don't expect a vote from them i am telling for your betterment only bring back the game but yeah after all it's just a game and real life is much more adventurous and interesting than that i hope people are much focused on to their daily lives and are focusing on their studies become something in life like me and join the army and make the nation proud oi where's my team still searching for tea leaves or what anyways don't stop studying and become a great person in life and respect your prime minister's decision after all he must have thought through something for the betterment of his country and stay safe and stop crying over the ban last but not the least <coughs> god has special retributions for fools corrupt politicians pakistans and chinese Thank as we all know today we are facing the most difficult times of our lives the covid 19 pandemic but we should not be scared by this difficulty instead we should get free from it by knowing how to take proper care of ourselves and not ignoring it or taking it casually as the secret of freedom lies in educating people whereas the secret of tyranny is in keeping them ignorant this is the reign of terror just like mine terror of corona people of the world take this reign of terror corona seriously and stay in doors follow the protocols given by the government like maintaining social distancing wearing a mask sanitizing your hands or else you will be guillotined Oh wait do they guillotine in India no i don't think so to fight this pandemic we have to show our strength to it by staying united as men of all countries are brothers the different people should help one another to the best of their ability it is with regret that i pronounce the fatal truth corona must die that the country may live oh people tomorrow we shall return to combat with the pandemic with strength and peace and may all the misfortunes of the world disappear oh people virtue without terror is murderous terror without which virtue is powerless thank you a bad good evening i am mrs emma shinder anarchy soldiers wife i think we are in very unprecedented times and i'm pretty sure it was caused by those pesky jews It is well known about their hatred towards fellow Germans and they would have known this. In fact, I heard a rumor that an old lady down the street was hiding a Jew in her house. Shh. Our great Führer Hitler plagiarized the Jews. Maybe that is why this pandemic is happening to fulfill all his unfulfilled dreams. I urge fellow Germans to maintain physical distancing and take safety precautions like wearing masks and sanitize their hands often. Please avoid contact with infected people and Jews. It is more a sense of insecurity that has seeped into our minds. We do not know what our future holds for us, but the one object that is keeping us together is our leader Hitler. As he said in his book Mein Kampf, the only preventative measure one can take is to live irregularly. We are so uncertain about the genome of the virus, its hidden symptoms and the efficacy of the vaccine, but never lose hope as our great leader said. If you want to shine like the sun then first you need to burn like it. If we can adapt ourselves to the difficulties of sailing through the pandemic we will have a good life in the great country whose future is safe in our Führer's hand. Hail Hitler. Hello everyone. I am Swami Vivekananda. With the recent banning of a game called PUBG Mobile 
there was a huge uproar amongst the youth of our country. The government has banned the game for a few reasons. First of all, it promoted violence, which is against mine as well as Gandhiji's principles. Violence does no good and neither did the game. It gives you no wisdom and promotes laziness. Secondly, the game was found to be playing with your data. It was a threat to your privacy. The game owners were selling your data to Chinese government. Now, it is for you to decide if you should play such games or no. But now, I'll be taking away. Then, Namaste friends, I am part of class 10C. Today, on the occasion of World Peace Day, I shall be enacting as Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation. Firstly, in my speech, we will discuss about the World Peace Day and then later on, how would Mahatma Gandhi react on PUBG Pan? What is peace? Peace is a fulfillment, a feeling of fulfillment. Peace means freedom from war and terror. These three words are enough to explain real peace. Peace is necessary for the existence of this world. If we have no peace within our lives, we will lead a very unhappy life. Local fights, regional clashes, civil wars can never bring peace to anyone. It will only cause destruction to the human race as well as nature. I am follower of Satyagraha as you all know. You have read my books, my stories. I do not believe in ahimsa or violence in any form. Indian government has taken the decision of banning PUBG game in India and I am very happy with this decision. I have two main reasons to justify myself. The entire idea of this game promotes violence. Why should we indulge in a game of killing? This is hinsa, violence. What happens? Happiness can one get from killing one other in a game? When we indulge in such games, our minds are indirectly developing aggression. Majority of the children in today's world are playing PUBG right from the age of 5 to the adults. They spend the time in playing this game of warfare. They evade from studying or talking to their parents. Moreover, there are several many reasons why I am happy with PUBG Pan. Many people have missed the important exams. Some have missed their jobs or job interviews and many have did suicide for just one reason that they were not allowed to play PUBG. The second reason which I think is that the company of PUBG is a South Korean. But this is not the main problem. The main problem is that it is with the partnership with the Chinese Tencent company. We all know the current situation. How China is treating us, trying to seize our land. This is the correct way. By dealing the situation with ahimsa, non-violence. If this game is so dear to you all, why you don't you switch to the Indian version of it? Let's adopt Swadeshi and boycott this foreign game. Give your support to Fauji. Boycott foreign games, use Swadeshi. Thank you all. 
for patiently listening to me. Once again, happy peace day to all. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Shalvi Atul Sirvi of Great Tennessee. On the account of peace day, I dressed up as Indira Gandhi, India's first female prime minister and an active Indian nationalist. Today, I'd like to portray a vision and ideology on one of the most currently trending topics, PUBG ban. I'm extremely overwhelmed now that the Ministry of Electronics and Information and Technology has finally taken a drastic step by banning PUBG. I know that because of this step, the youth, especially the gamers, must be unhappy and shattered. But now that you have the time and the cool to uh, think, you should think over how shattered and unhappy your parents must be and about the pain that they are undergoing just because of thinking that their intelligent kid who could have become an IIT, a doctor, a pilot or an architect has left behind all the aspirations back somewhere and is now trapped behind the four walls using slang language and spending all the time in a vain little game. That child is no longer a social person and is cut off from the entire family, relatives, friends, rather himself but is not even in the state to understand. Here, I'd like to recount a small incident from my life. My father, Jawaharlal Nehru, as you all may know, was a leader in the freedom struggle against the British rule, so I was naturally inclined to become a supporter of the same. I was just five back then when one of the tactics of India's nationalist movements to reject the foreign goods, especially the ones made in Britain, took place. Back then, I had a doll who was very close to me. It wasn't just a toy, but meant a lot more than that. However, I chose to burn my beloved doll just because it came from England, which back then was our enemy country. So my dear youth generation, this PUBG is a Chinese brand and that itself should be a big reason for you all to ban it out of your lives because India today aims at self-reliance. Don't you all have your own duties towards your own country? Besides this, how could you even get addicted to a fictitious game keeping us at all your aspirations, dreams and career? It's a very violent game and violence has always brought destruction and I'm afraid that it may change your attitude and make you hostile and aggressive which may affect your mental health for the worst and also leave you unable to pursue anything up in your future life. If you all are really that keen to play the battle of grounds, then I feel you should be joining the real battlefield the Indian Army. Your country needs you. You will make your country and your parents proud. Moreover, you yourself would be proud. Do remember, a nation's strength ultimately consists in what it can do on its own and not on what it can borrow from the others. Hope you all get back to your life with optimistic attitude and begin pursuing your aspirations back again that would ensure your nation's progress as you grow. Jai Hind! Hello everyone, I am Parikrama Gupta from grade 9. I am portraying the character of Olympe de Gorge from the French Revolution. How she would react on the COVID-19 pandemic situation. So, first I would like to tell you about her. She was a French playwright and a political activist who has written on women's rights. So, as you all are aware of the COVID-19 pandemic situation, it is a very complicated situation. In a nutshell, women have been suffering through a tough impact for decades. These, this pandemic has made these things worst. Women comprises the majority of the frontline healthcare workers globally, meaning that the female representation is vital in tackling the coronavirus crisis. The world's economies and maintenance of our daily lives are built on the invisible and unpaid labor of women. Before the crisis has been started, women did nearly three times work as compared to men. Now they are not being paid or being lesser paid and also Many, it has increased a huge amount in case work. They only want to be equally paid so they can support their families and equally treated as well. I just want to say that a woman is born free and lives equally as compared to a man. Thank you so much. 
नमस्ते आदाम एंड सत श्री अकाल टू एवरी वन आई एम भगत सिंह एंड टूडे आई एम हियर टू मोटिवेट यू टू फाइट दिस पैंडमिक कोविड नाइन्टीन यू से राइट दिस मे खिल योर बॉडी बट इट शुड नॉट बी एबल टू खिल योर आइडियाज दिस कैन क्रश योर बॉडी बट इट शुड नॉट बी एबल टू क्रश योर स्पिरिट नाउ फॉर यू ऑल compromise should not be surrender it should be a step forward and some rest that is all and nothing else covid 19 is deaf and to make a deaf hear the sound should be loud you can make the sound loud by staying at home and taking the necessary precautions not going out and being out of your home only at the time when it is needed and wearing a mask and practicing social distancing in public places is all you can do to fight this covid-19 thank you ji man is it my fault too don't blame me please today i at the pill line of class 10b is going to talk about pubg ban as jawana ne i'm proud to call myself the architect of foreign policies of india as i brought up the idea of panchashi why the fighting i think china needs to have a quick revision of the panchashil policy and understand the main goals first mutual respect between both the territories and peaceful coexistence so the disputes can be handled peacefully without any violence as for me pubg should not have been banned as many people love this game why should we have to ban this games and apps and impact the life of you is there a need of a like situation no there is not this youths can be solved peacefully without violence why should we have to make enemies by banning the apps and products i hope that the disputes are solved and resolved peacefully without any gunfight and i jawal nehru would like to say that bring peace and harmony I know the struggle. What has to face to be recognized? Yes. See my struggle. I was the first female president of INC. Do you know how hard I worked day and night to prove myself to the world? Is the Indian government even thinking about the hard work of all the TikTokers? The struggle they have had to become popular and get likes and followers. Girls must have spent hours to look good. They must have spent a lot of time searching for good clothes. This is struggle. How can the government ignore this? Though they lack talent and skills, but many TikTokers are stars who are looked upon by many people. I am against this. Indian government must value the hours spent by these TikTokers in lip syncing the song. My humble request to the government is to revoke this decision. Good morning to one and all present you. I am Pari Malde from class 9A and today I am going to represent the character of Rousseau. I am Rousseau, a French philosopher. Are your eyes anking? Yes. I know. This is the same problem for all of us. It has been difficult to parents our mental and physical health this situation is yet not impossible you can't make omelet without breaking some eggs that is to achieve something or richer parents have been always first teacher and concern about us now students are learning in front of their parents it's much easier During normal time, travel traveling from home to school and coming back consumes time. After coming home, students are engaged in their homework studies, so they could not spend much time with their parents. Today, due to virtual learning and online classes, they can spend quality time with their parents. and do self study also how they explore the, them one self spending a quality time with their parents and self study yes network issue network issue is the another main con getting problem 
but taking a peace side b side we can do beautiful ppt presentations see the video again revise go through and etc and we can also make charts and videos online uh, online schooling have brought its own charms their duty is to explore them creeping on what we lack is rose than making the most with what we can so make hay while the sun shines and explore oneself and achieve your goals you can on this note i will take a leave stay safe stay home bye bye main bal ganga dar tila swatantra sen main yaha tiktok ka samarthak kalgar yaha tiktok hota to main apne bandhon tak kini jan minto mein tut jata aaj pure desh mein plague ki tarah corona ka sawat hai aur isi tarah rehne ke liye main ab अपने बंधु को अगर और सूचित कर सकता था मेरे केसरी और मराठा ये दो रुद्र पुत्र है आज इसी तरह टिकटॉक के जरिए जान जागृति करने में बहुत काम आता है मैं गणेश उत्सव जैसे बड़े उत्सव लोगों को ता करने के लिए जान जागृति और देश का प्राति प्रेम भावना निर्मल करने के लिए और देश का स्वराज के लिए लेने के लिए यह टिकटॉक का बहुत बहुत जरूरी है इस टिकटॉक के जरिए मैं अपने विचार लोगों तक पहुंचा सकता था लोगों में मुझे लोकमान्य यह पदवी दी थी इसका मतलब है कि जो लोगों ने मान्य है इसलिए मुझे लोकमान्य कहा जाता था जाता है लोगों को लोकमान्य लगता है वो अगर टिकटॉक होता तो टिकटॉक के जरिए स्वराज मिलन और में और और भी आसानी होती थी इसके लिए टिकटॉक का होना बहुत जरूरी था मैंने लोगों को लगता और में देश के प्रति प्यार अदर बनने में इस टिकटॉक का मदद हो सकता कि स्वराज के लिए टिकटॉक जरूरी है और स्वराज हा मजा जन्म सिद्ध अधिकार है आणि तुम्ही मैं होणार आई एम सरोजी नायडू द नाइटिंगल ऑफ इंडिया कोरोना पॅंडेमिक हैज चेंज्ड द वे ऑफ लाइफ एंड द एजुकेशन एज सेक्टर हैज बीन ट्रांसफॉर्म फ्रॉम क्लासरूम लर्निंग टू वर्चुअल लर्निंग आई एनकरेज द वर्चुअल स्कूलिंग फॉर स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रेजेंट सिचुएशन ऑफ कोविड पॅंडेमिक एज इट इज द सेफेस्ट सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल ओव्हर द वर्ल्ड टू स्टे इनसाइड देयर होम Schooling at home is making students mind more creative. They are not sitting idle at their home, but using their creative imagination to invent things. Because of virtual learning, students are exposed to internet and their uses. It not only enhances their knowledge but also helps them to choose a career. Children can discover their hidden talents. Many educational institutions are promoting creative writing by organizing competitions such as essay writing, poetry writing. on the topic of corona and lockdown with the help of these platforms creativity of students can be improved western uh, western countries are more enhanced in technology as compared to india the future of the country is in the hand of the youth of today with help of virtual learning india can compete with the western countries hello everyone i am gisibe marsini the famous italian revolutionary you have heard of in your class 10 history textbooks today i am no more but looking at today's circumstances i came here to communicate with you all the government of india recently banned more than 160 applications out of which tiktok is one of them tiktok is an application which people use for making fun videos according to me but the app is a weapon used by china for modern warfare This app is responsible for destroying youth of various countries. So therefore it has been criticized by 
many countries like USA, India and you countries of Europe for its privacy and censorship issues. Every type of video is posted over it, whether it is violence, content nudity, drug use, sexual violence, etc. As a former revolutionary, I remember I used to print newspapers attracting the youth in which I should I used to attack Munarchi. So the youth got to know more about it and uh, uh, stood against it, the monarch. There, uh, same way, TikTok can be of very use during war time for stealing sensitive information of a particular country. Therefore, it has been banned in countries like India and US. And in India, which has rising tension between in China. It was of uh, it was a master stroke that the government banned it. My only take in is in this is that India saved itself from a political or a social apocalypse like situation during rising tensions. Thank you. Greetings everyone. Today I Khwahesh Mahajan from 10C am going to express how Subhash Chandra Bose would have felt regarding the banning of TikTok. We all are in a situation where our variant forces are locked in face to face with our eastern neighbors. We are fighting a battle everywhere on the borders, on the social front, on the health front and on the economic front. We have been in diplomatic discussions with our neighbors for at least 3 months but the situation is getting critical day by day. No real change in history can be achieved by discussions. The banning of the Chinese apps is an action which was required to in, uh, indicate that we can hurt them much worse when it comes to economic war. The result is clear. TikTok is looking for someone to acquire them to say, uh, stay up afloat. Clearly, you can't offend India and live in glory. Today, I will talk like Hitler, his feelings and observations. I'm the most followed military man, leader and result-oriented person. History would have been most kind to me if I would have won the World War II. It will not be wrong to say that I would have been all the most admired person in the earth. For me, winning is important, not the means, is my prime driving force. When I decided that Nazi are going to rule the world, I did everything but to do so. My army got defeated by Russia because of my persons could not keep with constant war and hunger. I was inches close to win World War II, but when I realized otherwise I owed the responsibility from front and sacrificed myself in the, my army dress. Another side of myself is that I was very fond of Indian culture people, great Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was a great friend of mine. I preferred to make swastik as my army sign. I was a great admirer of sports, particularly hockey. I remember once Indian team under the great Dhyan Chandji was playing against Germany in Germany. Indian team defeated Germany, myself offered to Dhyan Chand to play for us, for which I was willing to give everything. Dhyan Chand ji refused, so I admired his nationalism and his commitment and allowed him to go. If Corona crisis would be in my era, I would have taken all the required action without any delay. There can be two chances for it, accidental and deliberately. If accidental, all correction steps ensured any and virus would have been controlled then and there only without any delay if deliberately i would have punished person society and nation without warning and eliminated that from globe thank you